Okay, I'm going to talk today about a fertile pass for Aryan timing that we wrote about a year ago and have experimented with. Um, let me give a little context about our group at, at Intel. I work in the Strategic CAD Labs, which is a CAD research group at Intel, and we're exploring how uh, agile hardware design uh, can be done in an Intel-like environment. So we're asking questions like, how can we be more agile versus waterfall under design methods? What agile workflows should we use? Can you scale these things to really large teams? Do you even want to try to scale them to really large teams? You can talk to me afterwards if you want to explore that. Um, one thing we've sort of settled on is, can agile ideas be used to prove implementation ideas out quickly? So try to fail fast and uh, try a new idea if necessary. So we've been looking at that angle and trying to figure out what tools we can add onto Chisel itself in order to help with that. So this is a one way we look at it. We call it the butterfly diagram, where um, there's this flow where you start with parameterized RTO, go through Chisel 3 to the fertile flow. Then you can go on the left side, which is the functional correctness side, or you can go on the right side, which is the uh, sort of estimation side. So there's a short loop, which um, you know, just uh, peak poke light testers for the functional correctness. Um, and then a longer loop, like maybe you go through FPGAs if you need to have lots and lots of vectors go through. So on the right-hand side, it's we're estimating clock period. Um, so you can go through a full uh, synthesis and place and route step. Or maybe you can do something simpler, and that's what we're going to try to talk about today is the, the simpler flow. Um, These are, are some of the talks that our group is, is giving here today. So Abhijit later today is going to talk about FEV, so that's where it fits in the diagram. And Andre earlier talked about the uh, data flow capture stuff. And then I'm going to talk about quick area and timing estimation. So why do we want to do things uh, fast? Um, well, it, it's sort of, we, we have already this incredibly fast way to do uh, functional development using Chisel and the, the testing methodology that is there. I mean, it's so easy to write tests now that you can actually do test-driven development, which is write your test, make sure that it's not working, your new test, build an implementation, iterate until you make the test pass, refactor both the test and the implementation, and just do that over again. You can, you can do things in minutes that you know, used to take a very long time. Um, but you don't have that same thing for, for um, clock period or area estimation. But maybe we can add that, so, so that's what we'll talk about here. So it's a very simple idea. Um, we're going to build an area and timing estimator based on the fertile that gets generated from Chisel. So there's an example of some fertile over on the right-hand side here. And in order to estimate area, all we're doing is walking over the leafs of that fertile code, looking at each leaf instance and figuring out what area we should assign to it and summing all those things up. For timing, it's similar. Um, we can't just do a weighted sum. We have to analyze the net list, figure out what paths are in the net list, sum up all the delays along the paths. But in the end, that's all you're doing. It's, it's some very simple things. So it should work really quickly. Now, how, how useful this is, it sort of depends on how you do the area and the timing model of the leaf components. So we've experimented with some different ways, but what I'm going to talk about is something that's very simple, and it's the one we, we, we use. So we're, we're just trying to get a rough idea of what the area and the timing are. So one thing is we don't worry about inverters. Inverter is zero, zero delay, zero area. Basic gates we're going to assign some area cost to and some timing cost to. If you need a tree of those gates, or if you need larger gates, then you can build them out of a tree, out of smaller gates. Um, there's going to be some constants that we should probably propagate locally. So a good example of that is if you have a MUX with a constant input. In the end, that's going to look a lot like an AND gate. Um, 
maybe with some inverters on it, but it's going to be in this model the same area and delay as an AND gate. Um, equality operators are also going to turn into AND gates. The number of inputs is the number of inputs in the things that you're comparing together. Um, for more complicated structures, there could be area and speed trade-offs, um, area and delay trade-offs. Um, so you can pick some point along the area and delay curve, or I think what we do is we, we pick the smallest area and the smallest delay and run with that. Um, that gives you sort of a lower bound for what you can be doing. Um, and, I, and, and that's sort of the direction we want to go. We want to get rid of the bad ideas quickly. Uh, and accuracy doesn't matter too much. OK, so let's look at a couple of, of an example. Um, so here's a, a, a complete example of building a decoder in Chisel. Um, the top box there is just the interface. There's an index, a valid signal coming in, and then we have a one hot uh, collection coming out. So there should be two to the n, two to the k, uh, one hot bits for, for k input bits. Um, I have embedded in there a, a nice one line Scala program that you guys can complain about if you want. Um, <laughs> right here. But I, I think it's pretty simple. So all it's trying to do is trying to figure out, oh. It, it's trying to compute the, in, the inputs to the AND gates. So there's a valid AND and then there's all the different uh, combinations of, of uh, inversions on the inputs for all the different cases. So this is an example of how to build a decoder. If you want to run our area estimator, you run this command line SBT run main, the name of the driver, and then you run the fertile pass reporter's report area. And that will uh, you know, build up your circuit, then run the fertile pass and print out some stuff on the screen. So it's a fertile transform, but it's actually not changing the circuit any. It just has the side effect of writing something onto the screen for you. And here it counted up that there are uh, 80 units worth of area in the circuit, and all of them come from those mm -hmm. equality gates which is the way we're implementing AND gates in this particular case. So that's how it runs. It runs in about six seconds total. The fertile pass is about a half a second. Um, and then similarly, you can run through the, the timing flow. You do something just like that, but it's called inline and report timing, in this case, compact. Um, does some processing on the fertile code examines all the paths. In this case, it's saying all the paths are, have delay two on them because that's what we, we said those four input NAND gates were going to be because they're actually built out of a tree of, of two two input, or a depth two tree of, of two input gates. Um, we also have something fancier. We have a web interface um, for producing the same information, but this way you can, uh, First, compute all the paths from start points or to endpoints. You can select one of those things. If you click on that sink or source, it will then give you a path trace. If you go click on the path trace, then it will highlight where in the chisel code that corresponding uh, delay element was from. So this helps you understand what's going on in the circuit. Up in the left-hand corner, there's a histogram of all the uh, different path delays, and it's not very interesting here because they're all sitting at minus two. Maybe we'll see a better one in a second. So here's another case. So if you, you built that one decoder, maybe you have a better idea for a decoder. So there's another kind of decoder called a coincidence encoder. And this one is you split the bits up into two pieces. So here I just have one bit, the I0, and then in the second case I have two bits. So then there's six AND gates in the beginning, and then you take the um, pairwise Cartesian product of those things and produce your decoder that way. So here's some fertile code or some chisel code that'll do the same thing. Then you can run it through the error reporter. In this case, it's 56 units worth of area instead of 80 units worth of area. You can do this for various different sizes of circuits. And it actually matters as the number of uh, indices gets, gets bigger. That's quite a lot better to use, use this coincident like a decoder. But you can do this for other more complicated circuits. So that's sort of what it, what it does. There's, there's a, 
significant issues in doing this, so it requires a lot of probably care and use, but let me describe some of those. Um, and so there's a lot of potential inaccuracies in, in doing something by just looking at the furrow code. So one of them is the synthesis flow can do a lot of stuff after it gets the fertile to make it simpler. Um, another thing is the fertile itself may have some structural problems in it. There could be uh, things that in the circuit are gonna end up being implemented as a tree, but fertile sees them as this chain of, of gates, so you might have to go through 10 things um, in the series. Um, there's also blocks that have area and speed trade-offs, which we talked about before. There's also retiming. So here we're not talking at all about retiming. So maybe your design gets to be retined afterwards, so you're not gonna see that effect when you're looking at it at this stage. There's fan out long wires and other things like that. But it still provides an alternative to doing the full place and route. One's because it's faster, and two, it, it, the place, synthesis place and routes may also be pessimistic in the beginning before you spend a lot of time making sure all your pragmas are set up and your, and your design constraints are correct. So see, there's, these are, uh, this is a case of that. So if you change the code just, just a little bit and you change it from uh, uh, an AND R, which is how I ended up implementing that AND gate, to reduce with an AND, you think that that's you know, another perfectly legitimate way of writing the code. But when you do that, you'd end up with this chain of, of, of a bunch of AND gates in series, as you can see here. It's here. So uh, just to finish things off here, so these are some of the extensions and next steps that we're thinking about. So how we can integrate this with, with physical planning and we get some maybe wire length estimates as well, um, or timing estimates based on wire length. Um, we've done a little bit worth work with building some alternative libraries so that you can do this path length balancing up front in Chisel. We've actually implemented this idea of perfect retiming, and you can talk to me after that, afterwards if you wanna know exactly our, our linear programming formulation for that. And then another important step to make this useful is to deal with black boxes in a better way. But that's it. Thank you very much. If anyone has a question, could you uh, please come up? Um, I have one. I was wondering, did you do any work like cross-validating your results against the results of the synthesis tools? Um, some. And then we sort of gave up on it because the purpose of it is to identify real, real rocks in your in your design and fix them. Mm -hmm. And and we think we actually found some rocks using using this tool. So um, there were some of the components that Andre talked about earlier. If you chain a whole bunch of those things together, you you can end up with some long paths that are not immediately visible. And using this tool, you can find them and and then you decide to put a different kind of decoupled buffer in between that will keep a combinational path from occurring. So that's the sort of thing we ended up doing with it. Cool. Any other questions? All right, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.